Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. So today we're reacting to what happens if a super volcano blows up. I've heard about these. It's like, it's like some really huge underground volcanoes that are like, that's never been blown up. I saw this one video. It's like if one blew up, it affect, if one, let's say blew up from, uh, I forgot from where, but there's this place that has the biggest volcano in the world currently. But if it blows up from there, it's a place in America. It, it impact everybody in Europe too. So you know these things are huge. But yeah, if you knew Europe, it's like and subscribe. And yeah, let's watch. The Earth is a gigantic ball of semi-molten rock with a heart of iron as hot as the surface of the sun. Titanic amounts of heat left over from its birth and the radioactive decay of trillions of tons of radioactive elements find no escape but up. Currents of rock spanning thousands of kilometers carry this energy to the surface. Earth's crust is the only thing in their way. It feels solid to us, but it's only a fragile barrier, an apple skin around a flaming behemoth. True apocalypses can break through and unleash eruptions tens of times more powerful than all of our nuclear weapons combined subjecting the climate to centuries worth of change in a single year while drowning continents in toxic ash and gases. Super volcanoes. How big can they get? And will they put an end to humanity? I think that's a stretch. That's too far. Not humanity, but it would definitely wipe out a country. Volcanoes. There are many types of volcanoes from towering mountains to lava domes but they have two main sources. The first is at the boundaries between tectonic plates, the pieces of the crust that cover the Earth like a giant jigsaw puzzle. There are seven major tectonic plates and dozens of smaller ones drifting against each other at up to 15 centimeters per year. This sounds slow, but on geological timescales, it is a titanic struggle over who gets to stay on the surface. The winning plate crumples into a new mountain range while the loser is shoved underneath into an ocean of hot rock at 1,300 degrees Celsius, the asthenosphere. The temperature here is enough to melt rock into a liquid, but the insane pressures of all that mass keep it a superheated solid. Tectonic plates are usually in contact with water for thousands of years and absorb some of it. When they're submerged into the hot underworld, this water triggers chemical transformations that allow tiny portions to melt into magma. Liquid magma is less dense than solid rock, so it rises to the surface in furious bubbles that accumulate in sponge-like reservoirs right under the crust. If enough magma accumulates, it becomes powerful enough to pierce through the crust, which we experience as volcanoes. This mm, happens okay. under the winning plate like a revenge attack by the loser before it's erased forever. The second oh, main source of volcanoes are thought to be mantle plumes. These are columns of abnormally hot rock that rise all the way from the planet's core mantle boundary to the surface. Much less is known about them, but in a way, it's as if the Earth's mantle has weather patterns and mantle plumes are a little like hot air rising to form storm clouds. Storms yeah, hundreds of millions of years together. old, made of rock blue. circulating at a rate of a few millimeters per month. They don't care about the motion of tectonic plates, so they can break the crust to create volcanoes in the middle of nowhere that stubbornly stay active as the crust shifts around them. The volcanic boom meter. Scientists oh, love to bad. put big booms on a scale so and came up with a logarithmic scale that measures like the that. volume ejected during an eruption. The volcanic explosivity index, or VEI. Simply put, it starts really small and gets very big very quickly. A VEI-2 eruption would fill 400 full Olympic swimming pools with lava. We have around 10 of these per year. At VEI-3, we already see devastating effects. No, I'm not going to lie, bro. I forgot about volcanoes. I don't know why. I just... Probably because we haven't heard of any big volcanoes, like, blowing up. But I forgot about these things. Yeah, that's crazy. But they, they actually still blow. I think I think I've been too comfortable. I don't know what's going on around the world, but the only what's that volcano called? I'm trying to remember. Uh, it's at a national park. It's really big. I forgot the name, um, but if that one blows up, definitely 
the whole world would feel its impacts. Definitely. Because the, the scariest thing about these things isn't even the, the lava. It's the aftermath, bro. It's like, like the video said, you get poisoning from the ash. Ah, it doesn't seem like the... Yeah, volcanoes it doesn't it doesn't seem like the eruption like of the Semarang like volcano in 2021 in that destroyed thousands of homes in Indonesia. At VEI 5, we see catastrophic amounts of materials, cubic kilometers of debris, equivalent to an entire lake of molten rock blasted into the air. Like the 2022 Honga Tonga Honga Hapai eruption that sent a shockwave around the globe many times and created ocean-wide tsunamis. At a VEI of six, I an eruption can one, change either. the world. In 1883, the Indonesian island volcano Krakatoa erupted nearly continuously over the course of five months. One of those eruptions blew it apart, producing the loudest sound recorded in history. Ten trillion times louder than a rocket taking off, heard halfway around the world. Ten trillion times? 30 meter high tsunami crazy. swept away nearby populations, and so much gas and ash were released the global temperatures cooled by nearly 0.5 degrees Celsius. Red, dusty sunsets followed for many years. Many At VEI-7, we get super-colossal eruptions, millennium-defining oh. events that human civilization has only encountered a handful of times. Mount Tambora yeah. was a 4,300-meter-high mountain until it exploded in 1815 and released 400 times more energy than the Tsar Bomber. 140 billion tons of ash and dust were shot halfway to space before smothering the world's skies, turning them a sickly yellow. There was no summer the following year, crops died, and over 100,000 people Whoa. perished. No summer is crazy. Okay, 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 this is, this is pretty wild. I didn't think volcanoes could go this big, because I only, you know, I only hear about them. It blows up, you know, people, I don't know, after the disaster goes away, they rebuild, you know, another one in like a hundred years, it comes back and does the same thing. I didn't think about, these guys really missed summer. Wow. And yeah, he, don't forget to mention that the, those yellow clouds were definitely poisonous in a way. It can't just be yellow clouds. I would hate to die to a volcano, man. That's just... I don't know, especially the lava, you just burn slow because that stuff is just going slow. <sighs> yeah, these natural disasters This are is the dreadful else, potential of volcanic eruptions, with famines across the other side of the world and even centuries-long cold periods being attributed to them. Okay, yeah, but what's a supervolcano? Actually... The term supervolcano is a media invention and not a scientific term. The main issue with them is that not every eruption from a supervolcano is a super eruption. What makes supervolcanoes special is that they've been waiting to erupt for hundreds of thousands of years. Pressure builds up in colossal magma reservoirs several kilometers deep until it becomes strong enough to lift the rock above it by several meters. Rocks crack under the pressure until they finally give way and billions of tons of gas and ash blast out at supersonic speed an insane explosion of at least a thousand cubic kilometers that impacts every corner of the globe. And yet, that is only a small portion of the magma reservoir. Super eruptions are like a boiling pot of water, popping its lid off and spilling a bit off the top. Afterwards, the ground collapses into the void left behind, forming a hole called a caldera. Under this caldera, pressure starts building again until the volcano gathers enough energy for another super eruption but this could take hundreds of thousands of years. It's estimated that one of the few volcanoes capable of super eruptions on Earth could cause a catastrophic eruption every 17,000 years on average. That would make them far more frequent than comparable asteroid impacts. The most recent um, super eruption... That's kind of bo boring. That's pretty boring for a super volcano. Like, get, don't get me wrong, I don't I don't want people to die, but I thought it was going to be more action. If you just blow up, uh, that's boring. It just blew and spread a lot of ash that's going to be seen worldwide. I thought it would be like earth crust opens or something. Like, it spews lava for like a year or something like that. 
Because if, if a regular volcano can do that stuff, come on, it's a super volcano. I, I want to see some... Eruption is the Oranui eruption 26,500 years ago in New Zealand. With the force of dozens of billions of tons of TNT, oh, a Mount Everest-sized right? pile of explosives, a huge portion of the landscape was scooped out and thrown into the atmosphere. It left behind a caldera spanning 20 kilometers, and it caused the entire southern hemisphere to undergo a period of abrupt cooling. Though among oh, super eruptions, it's a mere firework. The Lake Toba eruption of 74,000 years ago was a much more significant turning point in history. It released a gargantuan 5,300 cubic kilometers of material, enough to blanket parts of South Asia in 15 centimeters of ash and trigger a rapid 4 degrees Celsius drop in global temperatures. It's possible that the volcanic winter lasted 10 this years, followed by warming. worldwide droughts for centuries. Earth's climate might have not recovered for a thousand years. The largest volcanic events we know of were not really huge explosions, but floods of millions of cubic kilometers of lava. The grand finale were the Siberian traps around 250 million years ago, a continuous release of lava for 2 million years. They raised the ocean temperatures to over 40 degrees Celsius, which caused the yeah, Permian Triassic extinction, killing over 90% oh, yeah, of all species. More. Earth's surface needed 9 million years to recover. These sorts of eruptions wow. don't change the climate, they are the climate. Well, but so... thankfully, we haven't seen anything even remotely close to that scale in many millions of years. So, should you be scared of supervolcanoes? Definitely not. They've been used to frighten many people and are overhyped as an unavoidable apocalypse. The most famous one, Yellowstone, will erupt again, but they will yeah, be relatively yeah, small one. eruptions. That Natural disasters for sure, about. but not enough to devastate the US so or come forest. close to ending humanity. The chance of a VEI-8 eruption thing. in the next few hundred years is less than 2%, and more importantly, it wouldn't come as a sudden surprise. However, less powerful but more frequent eruptions can also do serious damage to our civilizations and are in many ways a much greater concern. So we must watch for slow changes in magma reservoirs like ground swelling and temperature increases to get an early warning that can save the lives of people living the closest to a volcano. And there's time to oh, develop people solutions. Who live, oh, people who live next to volcanoes really scare me. Like, they're just different. Because you know your house will definitely get blown up. You, It's like, ah, uh, there's, there's this movie I watched. Um... Is like a civilized. There's people who just lived like under a volcano. They know that thing can blow up any time, but they just live. It's like the volcano is here. They live down here. It's I forgot the movie's name, but the point is, don't live near a volcano. It doesn't matter if it doesn't explode any any like it hasn't exploded in a hundred years, a thousand years. There's just gonna be that one day when every but when you least expect it, it just boom. It's like, I feel bad for people who live next to these because it's like, because you know when Florida gets hit by hurricanes, it's like water, a water, a water punishment. And then when these guys get hit, it's just fire it actually burns because you can recover from water, but you can't really recover from fire like that. So yeah, volcanoes are definitely... They don't appear often, so because I don't hear about them often. But if you live near a volcano, man, come on, come to the city. Don't that can remove sulfur and ash from the stratosphere to eliminate the root cause of the climate disruption we've seen from previous eruptions. Who knows, maybe we'll even be able to turn this force of destruction into an agent for good by exploiting the geothermal energy held in their giant magma reservoirs. Uh, we've done this work so for much. so many other disasters and we are already doing things we could only have dreamed about decades ago, like sending a probe to perform our first asteroid redirection test. With determination, humanity really can solve anything. So while deep below us an angry hell is churning and waiting for its moment, you can sleep well tonight. I always sleep well tonight. I mean, every night I sleep well, I'm at peace with myself, you know? I uh, I don't like, I, I love being at peace with myself because stuff like this, 
if you watch Biggest Astro in the World or what happens if this blows up, that blows up. It's a lot of scary stuff. But all I gotta say, you know, all I do is just like, I just smile at it because, you know, could happen, could not happen, but it's good to know anyways. Hopefully those uh, those giant super volcanoes don't blow up anytime soon. But I think you guys and me are safe, probably. But, I, you know, I think I'm going to disagree with them about the we don't know when volcanoes blow up, blah, blah, blah. Because some, some could go off randomly, to be honest. It just takes a random trigger because, you know... It's like, uh, I mean, we can track hurricanes, definitely, but this is a volcano, man. It's it's like, it's been holding all that pressure for a while. If something's been holding, let's say like, okay, let's say a super volcano. It's been holding that for like 100,000 years. And then somebody throws like a, let's say you have a grenade. No one walks around with this. I'm just saying, this is like a dream situation. You drop the grenade and then boom, it triggers that whole explosion and then it goes like that. So anything could happen, but hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm not trying to, I'm not, I don't want every human to go extinct. That's not good. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you and have a nice day.